What's up, YouTubers? I'm back from vacation, and while I was in St. Louis, Missouri, I went to a card shop in West Grove, which is just on the outskirts of St. Louis, called uh, the Baseball Card Dugout, and while my family sat in the car, I went and shopping for some cards, and he had a nice rack with uh, junk wax, and I was able to pick up these gems from the Strike Years, 1994 Top Series 1, and 1995 Top Series 1. I call this the strike year, obviously, because the 1994 season was cut short after 112 or 113 games, if I'm correct. And it wiped out uh, the playoffs and the World Series for the first time since, like, 1905 or something. And the 1995 tops uh, actually has an insert set, one per pack, that uh, prorates the player's statistics to show what their season stats might have looked like had the season not ended due to uh, greed from the players and the owners. So I didn't buy too many of these back in 1994 or 95. I was kind of getting out of my card phase. I was uh, in my mid-teens and uh, started to have different interests. I did have a few of the 1994 uh, Tops cards. Uh, I had some Ultra from that year and the regular Fleer, but I, I didn't dabble too much in the Tops. Uh, these cards have actually depreciated in value. As you see, I paid 75 cents a pack here and a dollar a pack for these. These actually had an MSRP of 79 cents when they came out. And these had a dollar 29. So they've actually gone down in price, probably because there is a major lack of rookies in both of these sets. I think the only notable rookie I saw from either year was uh, Paul Konerko, and I can't remember if that was 94 or 95. There is a second year Derek Jeter card in the 94 packs. Uh, that he shares with a bunch of other players. It's one of those uh, four-card prospect, future prospects cards. So we'll see if we pull that. Enough of me blabbering. Let's get right into these, and we'll see what we get out of these 1994-95 Tops packs. Picked up all these for 7 bucks. It's not too bad. I don't mind paying seven bucks for some junk wax I can make a video out of and pull some cards that I didn't buy back in the day. And they're all sticking together like a teenager's sock. All right. Draft pick Jeff Granger for the Royals. Future star Frank Rodriguez. Tim Belcher. Long career for Tim Belcher. Mark Newfield, failed prospect. Outfielder for the Mariners. Todd Zeal, gold. He actually had a really good career. Somebody corrected me earlier. I called him uh, like a one- or two-year scrub. And somebody said, hey, he had over 2,000 career hits, which he did. So shout-out to that uh, viewer by, by letting me know. We got Kevin Higgins. Never heard of him. Derek May. Pete Incaviglia. We either hit a home run or struck out. Mike Harkey. Jeff McNutt, uh, two tops gold cards in one pack. That's an anomaly. You're only supposed to get one. And I pulled uh, Sandy Alomar there. Failed attempt. It's like a blooper card. And Larry Walker. So these are also the years before steroids went crazy. Uh, I'm lay these down. They're going to keep falling. Before the steroids went rampant in the bigs, uh, right after the strike, of course, because attendance was uh, in the crapper. I think uh, Major League Baseball executives turned a blind eye to it. Uh, they knew what was going on, and they allowed the players to juice up to get the fans' asses back in the seats, which, of course, McGuire and Sosa did in 1998. So, all right, one Jeff Granger draft pick card isn't enough, so I'm lucky enough to pull two there. Marcus Moore with the Rockies, Otis Nixon, the Braves, Mark Leiter, Tigers, Cecil Felder, gold of Mitch Webster there with the Dodgers, Cecil Felder with his big old butt. He obviously was well fed in Japan because he went there skinny and came back fat. Kurt Gibson with the Tigers. Mark Fetters, the Brewers. You can see this. These cards are well stuck together here. Mark Timlin, Mike Timlin, Craig Lefferts, rocking the uh, super old school unis there on the back. Kevin Brown, 
obviously uh, imitating the form from way back in the day. I can't tell what he's wearing on his head. It looks like a diaper. And Doug Henry signing an autograph. And I'm wondering why a fan wanted Doug Henry to sign an autograph. All right, two more packs of these 94. Give it a little crease. Hopefully they won't be so sticky. Looking for a second year Derek Jeter. Basically the only thing good in there. Like I said, rookies were pretty limp from these two years. And there's a 93 Tops All-Star of Mike Stanley and Mike Pizza. And Howard Johnson, dabbling in his final years. Not the 30-30 man from back in the late 80s, early 90s. Steve Dixon, never heard of him. Lee Smith, I don't know if he's in the Hall of Fame or not, but uh, good career, good closer in his career. Daryl Whitmore, Felder in his fat butt now in a Topps Gold version. Will Cordero, Topps Rookie Cup. Cordero, he had a good couple first years, and then he just kind of disappeared, if I remember correctly. It's like a 280, 290 hitter with some pop. Vinny Castillo, pre-steroids, because that guy got huge and was hitting 30 to 40 home runs a year there for the Rockies. John Olerud, good hitter, 2,000 career hits, a couple of batting crowns, I believe. Bill Wirtz, Russ Springer, and Jason Bure. He was a promising pitcher back in the day for Jason Bure. I don't know what happened to him, though. All right, last pack of 94 tops that I'm regretting paying $3 for. No, I'm just kidding. Ugh. They're all stuck together. We got a Ryan Sandberg there on top that I partially pulled some of the uh, UV coating off of. You can see where it was stuck to that other card there. And uh, try action. Pat Mahomes, father of the Chiefs quarterback. Derek May standing in the dugout still. Kurt Manwaring about to tag somebody out, I think. We got a draft pick of Billy Wagner. He actually panned out and had a really good career, over 300 uh, career saves. And Jeremy Lee draft pick. You did not pan out, Jeremy Lee. Kenny Lofton, one of the best leadoff hitters of the uh, mid to late 90s. Scott Liddy of the Athletics, never heard of him. Mark Thompson, future star. Mm, nope, not quite future star. Terry Muholland Drive, tops gold. Jay Baller and Kevin Rogers with the Giants. You can see the design of the tops that year wasn't uh, too bad. Kind of a weird font with the name in cursive there. And I don't know if that's supposed to be a really small bat. Maybe like a stick ball bat there down at the bottom. And basic card backs with the uh, photo on the left and stats there. Not that anybody gives a crap about what 1994 tops looks like, but I'll do it anyway. Now, 1995 tops, I really didn't buy hardly any of these. I think I had I bought one or two packs and that's no joke. I remember the cyber stats cards where they projected what the player stats would have been had the season not been wiped out. I had a Kirby Puckett cyber stats card. So, all right, Juan Gonzalez. He was a definite Reuter. My first cyber stats card is of Steve Cook. You can see these cards are actually kind of cool. They have a metallic-y look to them and the player's name. And the cursive down there at the bottom changes colors, but those were kind of cool looking. Base design was pretty nice on these two. So, Steve Cook. Had he played the entire year, he would have gone 5-15 and 15 with a 5-16 ERA. So, obviously Steve Cook was saved from having a 5-15 and 15 record by the strike. All right, we got Steve Traxel, the Cubs. Todd Benzinger, that's a great card. Getting, I don't know, looking at some high heat there. Hal Morris with the Reds. Mike Bordick, the A's. Some backwards cards. We got Joe Carter, the Blue Jays, towards the end of his career. Denny Hawking up a loogie, the Minnesota Twins. Travis Fryman. I don't know what's going on here. Wayne Kirby. He's in there like three times. Is he safe? Mike Williams with the Phillies. Never heard of him. P. 
Pete Harnish with the Astros. Tony Fossus. And we got a couple of future stars here. We got uh, Tony Clark, who was actually the uh, MLB players rep. And Latroy Hawkins, he actually had a long career too. So two future stars that actually had decent uh, careers there. Pack and number two. Rather than the Cyberstats cards out of these packs, I don't know what they were, what the inserts were, or if there were even any inserts. And like I said, I didn't buy enough of these back in the day, so I don't really know. Right off the top, there we got Brett Barbary with the Marlins. Cyberstats card of the heck is that? Ismail Valdez, who would have gone three and two with a two nine eight ERA in seven saves. All right, I've got some interesting looking cards here. We got Joe Rosselli, future star with the Giants. Since I've never heard of Joe Rosselli, I'll assume he didn't make it as a future star. Jeff Granger, stat, star track. Moise Alou, NL average leader. The Expos were actually killing it in the uh, 94 season before the strike. They were like the best record in the bigs. Maybe would have made the, probably would have made the playoffs. Uh, but instead... With the strike wiping out the year, the Expos, I think, were only there for one more year. And then MLB bought them out and shipped them to the D.C. to become the Nationals. So, anyway, Mike Dyer, need of better cards here. We got uh, Tops All-Stars, Brett Boone and Carlos Bayerga. Brett Boone before the steroids. Ozzy Smith, towards the end of his career there with the Cardinals. Eddie Zamb Zambrano, Zamboni, Game 7 of the Stanley Cup Finals list tonight. Kevin Seitzer, Bill Wegman, Howard Johnson, still hanging around there with the Rockies. Gary Gaetti, old man Gary, run Gary. Tom Glavin, Hall of Famer, 300 game winner, and Al Martin. All right. Just keep in mind, folks, I paid a dollar each for these packs, so... I don't think I'm going to recoup my money. Wally Joyner, in an article I read about him back in the day, uh, a player offered him steroids, and he started to take them, and then had a huge guilt trip and flushed them down the toilet and didn't take them and broke down crying. So good job, Wally Joyner. Even though you're a big sissy, you said no to steroids. Brian Jordan's stat predictor thing there with uh, unknown Giants player in the background there. I can't tell who that is. I wanted to say it was Robbie Thompson, but that doesn't look like Robbie Thompson. He would have batted 284 with six homers and 24 RBIs. Let's flip all these goodies over here. We got uh, Kirk Reeder at the Expos. He was a flamethrower who threw in the high 80s. Paul Wagner, Barry Larkin, Hall of Famer, before his steroid year when he came out of nowhere and hit like 30 home runs the one time in his career he did. Jeff Montgomery, Mark Aker. It's still chilly in California. It's Chili Davis. Jaime Navarro. Old man Wade Boggs sliding in. His 3,000th career hit, I think, was a home run. One of the few guys that have their 3,000th hit to be a home run. Jason Jacomi, Lance Blankenship with the A's. Melvin Nieves with the Padres. And we got Biggio, Hall of Famer, and Jeremy Burnitz. Looking like he's about to get picked off the of base because he doesn't know what he's doing. Bijou's a Hall of Famer. He might have dabbled in the juice with Bagwell, Louis Gonzalez, and Steve Finley. All right, we got Dave Weathers, the Marlins. Ben McDonald, Stat Tracker, or Cyber Stats. 18 and 9 with a 416 ERA. 416 ERA, and he went 18 and 9. That would have been a pretty uh, amazing stat there. Would have obviously had to got some major run support. Mark Thurman draft pick. Didn't pan out. Star Trek, Kurt Miller. Never heard of him. Andy Bennis, and a strikeout leader for the Padres. He was the number one draft pick way back in the day. 1995 prospects. We got Terrell Wade, Juan Acevedo, Matt Arendale, and Eddie Priest. So, obviously, star packed card there. All-Stars, John Franco and Lee Smith, two good closers from back in the day. We got Dave Nissen, 
Dave Nilsson with the Brewers. I don't know what's going on there. And we got Johnny Ruffin. Johnny Ruffin, the passer, Cincinnati Reds. Brian Harvey with the Marlins. Daryl Kyle, rest in peace, with the Astros. Still don't know what happened to him. He was just found dead in his hotel. I don't know if there was drugs or uh, foul play or suicide or what. Stan Unibrow Javier. Geronimo Barroa, that's old school with the A's. Troy Neal, back-to-back star-packed A's players there. Troy Neal, completing the trifecta. And Tim Sam Salmonilla, he was uh, AL Rookie of the Year back in 1993 at 26 home runs. I think he might have had over 200 career home runs, maybe 250. But uh, Tim Salmonilla. All right, so that was my review of some 94 and 95 Strike Year Tops baseball cards. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And uh, we'll see you next time.